For me, it was a shock because I was perfectly healthy on Tuesday. On Wednesday, I was short of breath. Went to the doctor thinking I had bronchitis, pneumonia, something. Um, and it turned out to be I wasn't. My lungs were shutting down. They could get my lungs back, thank goodness, but they could never get my kidneys to come back. Going through dialysis keeps you alive, and I'll always say that, but it is not a comfortable way to live. You're very, very restricted on what you can drink, eat. My doctor was really, really supportive of knowing my personality that I would do much better if I could get the transplant. All of a sudden, your life is back. Maybe not quite as normal as it was before, but it's just like a miracle that you can't describe it, how the feeling is. They approached me with it and explained what the study was and why they were trying to um, have people enter into the study. Um, and at that point, I thought, well, if it'll help somebody else down the road, I'll be my you know, hero self and I'll do it. The Emory Transplant Center was very involved in the uh, uh, development of, of the whole class of drugs that Belatacin fits into. The, the average lifespan of a, of a deceased donor transplant, uh, the most common type, would, would only be 8 to 12 years. But if you're a young person coming to transplant, that means you're looking at you know, potentially needing two or three transplants um, for, for a normal lifespan. So Belotacep offers the, the first um, alternative to the cyclosporin type drugs um, that have been the mainstay actually for, for nearly 20 years. Um, and uh, they um, offer an al alternative that looks like it achieves the good short-term outcomes that we wanted to maintain, but it preserves kidney function and reduces cardiovascular side effects as well. The, the problem is that the transplants just don't last as long as we'd like them to. The way your body rejects an organ, uh, your tra a transplant, is it recognizes it as foreign. Um, now that's a good thing in the case of a virus. You want your body to respond to a virus. In the case of a transplant, that's not what we want, and we want to control the immune system. The way the immune system gets activated is first it gets a recognition signal. It says, oh, this is foreign, and, and it starts a response. But it also needs a second signal, um, a second set of uh, interactions to occur, and that's, that's called co-stimulation. And uh, Belotacip blocks that second signal, that co-stimulation signal. So the, rec the transplant is recognized as foreign, as foreign, but that go signal, the co-stimulation signal, is blocked. The Bella infusions are great. You get an IV. Once that's done, you just sit. And so it's really a, a easy process. There's really nothing to it. I think for many patients, Bellatacin may be an improved quality of life in addition to hopefully an improved survival of their transplanted organ. My customers always ask me where I had my transplant, and I always tell the memory. And I, and I always tell them I had such a good experience that I think their staff here and with all the innovations that have come to Emory to be able to do some of the things that they've been able to do, I think it's just an exciting time. And then after the transplant, you know, it just makes, it just gives you your life back. It's just like a miracle that you can't describe it, how the feeling is. It's just a wonderful experience.